Hey, what's up everybody? Tutal Toby here. And today we're gonna talk about the Pierce constraint in SolidWorks. And the Pierce constraint in SolidWorks can be a little confusing. So this is a slide that I use to explain this constraint to my students. So you can see here that what we've got is we've got this kind of arrow running into a target or piercing the face of a target. And so the target itself is acting as our 2D sketch plane. It's a nice planar surface. On that target somewhere, there's going to be a 2D point. Let's say that 2D point is out here in space. And passing through that target, there's going to be a line or a curve. It'll be outside of the current sketch and it'll be passing through the target. And the thing you want to remember about the Pierce constraint is that the Pierce constraint is a relocation constraint. And what I mean by that is we're going to take this point here, the point that exists inside of the 2D sketch, and we're going to relocate that point over to where that line or that curve is passing through the 2D sketch. And so let's take a look at this in SolidWorks so that we can see this in action. So I'm going to just create a brand new part here. I'm going to click new, brand new part. I'm going to be using millimeters for this part. So if you're following along with, just take a moment and come down here in the corner and set your units to millimeters. And then I'm going to go to my front sketch plane. I'm going to begin a sketch and I'm going to sketch a line here that starts in the upper left and moves down at an angle. And what you can see about this line is that it ends up directly above of the origin here. So you can see the origin is here. Really what we're looking at here is the right plane of the model and this line is passing through or piercing the right plane of the model. So you start out by creating that line there that's passing down through the right plane of the model. Now we're gonna exit that sketch and then we're gonna roll the view around a little bit here and we're gonna create a new sketch on the right plane. So pick the right plane, choose to begin a new sketch, orient your view, and then we're gonna create a circle here on the right plane, just kind of out in space, and that circle is gonna have a diameter of 20 millimeters. So we hit escape and we can see that this circle is totally unconstrained, it's totally free to move around here. I'll put this back to where it started. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna just roll the view a little bit and we're gonna create a constraint here that takes this point and it relocates it over here to where the line is passing through the sketch plane. Now, this is the key idea here of the Pierce constraint. The Pierce constraint is a relocation tool and the Pierce constraint always takes place to a point in the 2D sketch. So if I take this point here and then I hold control and then I choose this curve here, and then I let go of control, I can choose to assign a pierce constraint, make pierce. And we can see here that when I assign that pierce constraint, what happens is that point jumps over to this new location. It's a relocation tool in your 2D sketch. And there's only one single point that pass where that line passes through the sketch plane. That's what's different about the pierce constraint compared to the coincident constraint. So let's say I click on this pierce constraint here and then I choose delete on my keyboard. So I get rid of that uh, pierce constraint. And then I'm gonna take this and kind of move this back over here. And now let's say I go to a, um, uh, a normal view here, so control eight and I take this point and I hold control and I pick this line here and I let go of control and I choose coincident. Well, the difference between coincident and Pierce is that coincident could be anywhere along that line. So you can see that this, this circle here really hasn't been locked down and that's not really gonna help us when we're doing things like sweeping and lofting and we're trying to hook our sweeps and lofts into guide curves. So I'm gonna control Z here to undo that. Now you can see the circle's totally free to move around. Remember the Pierce constraint goes from a point in the 2D sketch to a curve outside of the 2D sketch. In fact, if I go back to those rules that I show my students in this slide here, what I tell them is that the Pierce constraint always starts when you're working in a 2D sketch. It's always added to a point in that 2D sketch and it's always added to a curve or a line outside of that 2D sketch. And that curve or line is passing through or piercing the 2D sketch plane. So if you wanna take a moment, you can take a screen capture of this slide. I actually use this slide when I'm teaching my advanced part design training class. And that's a class that we have coming up a little later this month. So if you've ever been interested in learning a little bit more about like fillets or sweeps, 
curves or lofts or multi-body or patterns. This is a terrific class to take. It's two days long. It's live with me over our web meeting. So you can ask me any questions that you have about advanced part design. We're going to teach you a lot of really good content, give you some training files and a training manual to work from. And that class is actually coming up a little later this month. So I'll include details down below in the description of this video. But just to review the Pierce constraint, it's always added when you're working in a 2D sketch, it's always added to a point in the 2D sketch, and it's always added to a curve or a line outside of the 2D sketch. This can be a little confusing until you practice it several times, so let's practice it again here in SolidWorks. I'm in a 2D sketch, I pick a point in the 2D sketch, I hold control, I pick a line or a curve outside of the 2D sketch, I let go of control and I choose Pierce, and this is a relocation command. It's gonna take this point and it's gonna relocate it over here to where the line is passing through the sketch plane. So I choose Pierce and boom, there we go. We got that pierced, we are in good shape. And so this is really handy when you're doing sweeps and lofts with guide curves, because if this guide curve were to move, were to relocate, well, that's gonna pull that pierce constraint right along with it into that new location. And there we see that that pierce constraint updated. So let's take a look at that in a slightly more complex example here in this loft of the coffee mug handle. So the way that this coffee mug kind of came into existence was we started out by creating the, the main shape of the coffee mug, because it's easy to get measurements from from that main shape and then what we did was we we brought in an image of the coffee mug and what this did for us was it gave us the layout information for the handle the shape of the handle so what that means is that i can get in here and i could create some sketches let me delete this existing loft here i could create some sketches here and i could use these sketches as guide curves for the loft so i sketched a sweet a a spline here let me just change the color of that sketch. What sketch is that? Guide one for mug handle, right mouse button, sketch color. Let's make that like a magenta, something that really pops out there. And I created a sketch here for this outside guide curve. So the inside guide curve, the outside guide curve. Then what I did was I went in and I created some planes. So create a new plane perpendicular to that curve at the end point. So now on that plane, I can choose to begin a new sketch and I can choose to create a sketch of an ellipse. Now I know that the width of the mug at this location up top here is about 16 millimeters. So I'll just type in that dimension there for the width 16 millimeters. But as far as the height of that ellipse goes, well, that's gonna be a pierce constraint. Now this is where things can get a little confusing because you might say, can't you just take this point, hold control, pick this point here and choose to make those coincident? And the answer is sometimes you can, Sometimes you cannot, it depends on what's going on with that guide curve, like this lower guide curve here, you can see that this end point is not exactly in the right location. This is where the plane is, this is where the end point is, so that ellipse is gonna end up being a little bit stretched out if I try to hook it onto that end point. And really, it's, it's not gonna line up anyway, it's gonna be a projection to that point. So if, for example, I take this point on the ellipse and I hold control and take this point here, let go of control and say coincident, see, it doesn't actually line up it's really not exactly what we want it's being projected into that location but really what I want is I want this location where the spline is passing through the sketch plane so let me get rid of that coincident relationship let me get rid of that coincident relationship let's remember that the pierce constraint is always added while you're working in a 2d sketch so I am working in a 2d sketch here it's always added to a point in the 2d sketch I'm gonna hold control I'm gonna pick this curve it's always added to a line or a curve outside of the 2d sketch I'm gonna let go of control and pierce I'm gonna take this point here in my 2D sketch. I'm gonna hold control, pick this curve, let go of control, pierce, and it's gonna relocate that point to the correct location. And that is how you use the pierce constraint in SolidWorks. You always create the pierce constraint when you're working in a 2D sketch. You always add it to a point in the 2D sketch and you always add it to a curve or a line outside of the 2D sketch. So I hope that this helped to kind of clear up what's going on with the pierce constraint. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like the video, leave me a comment even if you just enjoyed the video. And of course, if you're interested in getting some advanced training in SolidWorks, sign up for that training class. It's coming up at the end of the month here. It's gonna be a really good time two days plus a training manual plus some sample files for you to work from so i hope that i'll see you in that training class otherwise i hope to see everyone in the next video